everybody and welcome to the writing lounge. I'm Allison Freyberg and today we're working on conquering writer's block. Uh, tips and techniques that are going to get you started and push you through those difficult moments. Let's dive in. For those of you who have been here before, you know this is who I am. I'm a professor of communication and cultural studies in the School of Business and Society. I also am uh, an associate director for our study abroad programs, our international programs. If you want to find out anything more about those, please just jump on down here at redlands.edu slash SB International Programs. And if you want to know more about the Writing Lounge, it's at redlands.edu slash Writing Lounge. And if you want to uh, contact me, you can find me on LinkedIn and you can also just email me right there at that address. Okay, let's see what we can do about writer's block. A few questions here. I think in so many instances, our writer's block happens at the beginning, right? How many of you have trouble getting started? So many of us, right? And I like to think of what, think about those questions. What keeps you from getting started? What do you do instead of starting? What techniques have you tried to get started? I'm going to tell you right now here, I'll share with you. If we were working together, we'd all kind of share these questions, but for the sake of this webinar, let's look at question number two. What do you do instead of starting? Now, I don't know about you, but I know that I get a lot of laundry done. My kitchen is very clean. I'll check work email. I'll check LinkedIn because that's professional, right? Uh, I will check uh, Instagram, of course, uh, and if things get really bad and I'm trying to procrastinate and avoid getting started, I might even go on over to Pinterest. Okay, the whole point is we waste a lot of time. Well, I know you're dealing with work emails and stuff like that. You're doing other stuff and not getting started, and I want to get us past that. And I think there are two reasons why we tend to get writer's block when we're dealing especially with analytical writing or larger research papers. And the first thing is, I think you were taught the wrong way. A lot of us were taught the wrong way. Think about it. What's the first thing that people taught you to come up with at the beginning of the experience of the process of writing a paper? What did they say? You needed to develop a thesis, right? But think about it. What's a thesis? A thesis is a decision. It's an answer. It's where you ended up. It's not where you begin. No wonder you're having trouble starting. You're asked to come up with the answer at the beginning of the process. That's not helpful. Neither is the second thing you were taught. What was that? That's right. Get a thesis, then make an outline. Okay, so you had to come up with an answer at the beginning of this whole process, which of course is going to be vague and superficial because it's the beginning of the process. Now you have to make an outline for that thing you made up at the beginning? No, of course you have trouble getting started. We're doing the wrong things at the beginning. Think about your writing process, right? You're doomed if you were asked to come up with a thesis and make an outline right at the beginning. Instead, what if you started with a topic and a question? It becomes a whole different gambit. And we have something like this. You do want to have a sense of the topic, what are you interested in? But you don't need to have a take on it. What you do need to work towards is a question about that topic that you would like your essay to answer. If you get to the place where you're trying to find a question that the answer to which will drive your paper, you're in a great place because you can see where the journey to answering it will take you. You don't have to come up with an answer at the beginning. 
So what I'm going to try to do is give you a few techniques to generate a topic and a question. Because once you get the question, it's not that hard to answer it. So we're going to think about this and we're going to think especially about how and why questions. Because those will get us really digging deeply into a topic. The second reason I think we get writer's block is because we're trying to write a paper all at once. Sit there, maybe you do a bunch of research, and then you sit there and the screen's staring at you, the cursor blinking, and you're trying to write a paper. That is hard to do, and it's hard to do because look at all the stuff we need to think about when we're writing a paper. so many things. I can't do all those things at once, so I, and when I try, I end up getting nothing done. So we need to break down this process. And, okay, Allison, I'm not going to start with a thesis and outline, and I'm not going to try to do 85 things at once. What can I do? Let's see. First thing I'm going to recommend you do is try to summarize well. I don't care if you're looking at an article, a book chapter, a book, a company, a situation, a theory, or a concept. We need to be able to demonstrate that we understand it. Not just that we've taken a few notes or we've jotted down some key phrases. You always know when you're in that position when someone asks you to explain this idea or explain this situation and all you can toss out are a few words and a couple of nouns and, and uh, there's no demonstration of understanding of an argument, of understanding of a theory or a concept. Here are some steps that will help you to actually summarize well to write what I call a real summary. The first thing you do is introduce the writer. Who is the writer? What's their expertise? Are they an economist? Are they a management theorist? What are they? Are they a business analyst? The next thing you'll do is introduce the writer's topic and central claim. What is the writer? talking about what are they trying what decision did they come to then explain how they got there what are the reasons explain how those reasons fit together how the ideas connect to each other and explain which ones are the most significant perhaps for your purpose and why notice explain 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 that's how you summarize you explain connections between concepts. You explain movement within an argument. If you're a person who tends to use highlighters a lot, please stop. A highlighter doesn't force you to understand anything. It just makes things yellow or orange or lime. And you never come back to it. If you want a different way of summarizing, you can use a summary chart right here, where let's say you're looking at an article. Well, break it down, number its paragraphs. And then in this middle column, go ahead and write down what's the key point, what's the central point of that paragraph. And then maybe if there's a few paragraphs that have really key quotations that are going to be meaningful for you, you write it down in a third column. And maybe, there's a fourth column that are your questions or your reflections. That would be helpful, but keep them in a fourth column. Because in order to reflect on something, you have to demonstrate that you understand it first. Well, and what happens when you complete this chart is you end up going down this middle column. And as you read down that middle column, you see a map, the architecture of an argument. 
and you will be able to summarize someone else's idea, someone else's article, someone else's theory by reading through this middle column and then maybe bringing in a quote when you see it's particularly effective. Okay, those are two ways to demonstrate that you understand what you're talking about. The absolute necessary first step. Now, say so you've done that. We still need to get to that topic and that question. Right? So here are six techniques that will help you get started or help push you through those difficult moments. Let's go through. I'm going to go through each one for you. 20 questions. I like this one a lot. Number one thing about getting started or generating ideas or pushing past, past writer's block. Again, one of the reasons we get writer's block is, you know, that critic that sits on our shoulder all the time. Well, that critic needs to go away for a little while and you need space to just generate. And one way to do that is by focusing on questions and not on answers. So in this case, whatever you're looking at, right? Uh, whether it's a company, a situation, a theory, a concept, an article, ask 20 questions about it. Don't answer them, just ask 20 questions. So who's involved, Who's who does it affect, all that kind of stuff, right? What questions, when questions, where questions, why questions, how questions, what about questions. Just generate 20 questions. Doesn't matter what they are and you don't have to answer them. What you do need to do is after you've generated about 20 questions, and 20 of course is a completely arbitrary number, but once you've generated a page full of questions, then go look at those questions. And one of two things are going to happen, maybe both. Number one, you're going to hit upon a how or a why question that you're really interested in and you just need some honing. Or number two, you're going to notice when you read through your questions that you keep kind of asking the same thing over and over again. Trust yourself. That's what you're interested in. See if you can hone a how or a why question from there. And then what I think is really productive to do is to combine it with this next hack, this next little exercise. And that's a free write. Now, a free write is where you just give yourself three minutes, probably no more than three minutes, and you just write the biggest run-on sentence of your life. No punctuation, nothing. You just write a big old run-on sentence. It's not brainstorming. It's not note-taking. There's no bullets involved. You have to actually write out sentences, but you can't stop. If you can't think of anything to write, you just start writing, I can't think of anything to write. I'm really thirsty. Oh, I wish I had the beverage. That cup of coffee was so good this morning. And and then eventually you'll sort of get back to the topic, but you have to keep writing. So you can imagine if you had grabbed one of the questions from the 20 questions and then used it to focus a free write on, you'll generate a bunch of material. Then I think you should do two free writes. You do the one free write and you get up and you walk away for a minute and you come back and then you find something in that free write and you pull it out and you do one more free write on that that you want to focus on another three minutes. Now, those two exercises, you figure 20 questions maybe takes you 15 minutes. Free write takes you six minutes plus one minute to uh, take a little break. And you're talking 21, 22 minutes. Now you would have spent we all would have 45 minutes checking work email, checking LinkedIn, checking Instagram, maybe even going to Pinterest, and 45 minutes would be gone. In this case, you've used 20, 25 minutes, and no, you haven't written a paper, but you've used writing to try to get a topic, to try to get a question that you might want to use to drive your paper and you're already way ahead of the game. Technique number three, notice focus and ranking. And this is actually from writing analytically, Rosenwasser and Stevens writing analytically, 
a great book that I've used for many, many years. And every edition is just that much better than the previous one. I highly recommend it. One technique they recommend is notice, focus, and ranking. And this technique is designed to get us, particularly when you're confronting another, uh, an article, a theory, or a concept, and it's new to you. This one's really helpful because instead of, you know, we have a tendency to, to just react to stuff we uh, contend with, right? Just to new stuff. We just react with, oh, I like it. Oh, I don't like it. I don't like it. That's silly. That, and we have to get out of that knee-jerk mode. Notice, focus, and ranking helps us do that. For this exercise, what you do is you divide your page, like make three columns on your page. And the title of one is what's interesting about the text, what's revealing about the text, and what's strange about the text or the concept or the theory or the company. And you just fill in those columns. Just really fill them in. Take some time. What was interesting to you? Okay. What was revealing? And what was strange, felt really different or surprising? Fill up those columns. And then the final move is to focus on three to five of them, you know, circle them, bring them on out, and then rank them. And that will really get you in a more analytical frame of mind, in a reflective frame of mind. Again, you have to show that you're understanding the piece, but you're also, instead of going, I like it, I don't like it, you're figuring out what's revealing. You're noticing patterns. You're figuring out what's strange. You're using this as moments to, to spring from. Okay. Now, I think you can pair this with this exercise, which is called priority three. And this is, now you've, you've done notice, focus, and rank, and you have, let's say you took three of your the best things you found from the interesting, strange, and revealing chart you made. You pulled them out and you ranked them one, two, and three. For the priority three exercise, now you have to find someone to work with. And you really do, that's what's vital about this exercise. You find someone to work with, preferably someone who's who's had to read the same stuff and they've also found three elements and ranked them. And what you have to do is explain to your partner why number one ended up being number one and more important than number two and why number two ended up being more important than number three. You have to explain why these elements ended up in the positions they did. Your partner is going to have different priorities, different reasons, and it's in the explanation of the reasons for the ranking that the reflection emerges and you start figuring out, well, maybe I'm interested in this topic. Well, maybe I'm interested in figuring out X. That's priority three. Okay, this one is for all of you out there who tend to hang around with your finger on the backspace key a lot. You're, you're sitting there, you're trying to generate ideas, and then you come across a word and you go, huh, oh, that looks like it's spelled funny. And then you end up opening up another tab and another tab and another tab. And then you come back to continue writing that idea. And where's that idea? It's gone. So in that moment, think about it. You had two ideas. You had two things going on. You had this interesting idea in an early form, but an interesting idea. And then a word that was misspelled, or is that a semicolon I use there, or a comma? Right? And in that moment, if you got distracted by the comma or the spelling of a word, you prioritize that, and, and I don't mean this facetiously, you prioritize the semicolon over maybe an idea that could have changed the world. Now, I don't know about you, but that's a bad choice. 
right? You don't want to lose ideas for the sake of some technical clarity that you can take care of later on. It needs to get taken care of, but it needs to get taken care of later on. So, fess up. How many of you are the backspacers? I am. So, here's an exercise for you. Cover your monitor. Turn it off, cover it, whatever you need to do. Give yourself 15 minutes and type. Now, this isn't a free write. You don't have to be typing all the time. These are not big run-on sentences. But you also don't have to, like, overthink anything either. You're just... Thing is, you can't look at your screen. And if you can't look at your screen and see things, you can't be distracted by them. You can't be worried about a comma. Give yourself 15 minutes. It's hard because in the first few minutes, you're thinking, okay, you're trying to remember what's on the screen and then you're hitting, still hitting the backspace because you remembered where it was and you're working that way. Okay, so you got to push through those few minutes. But what students tell me, what writers tell me, is that about, at about eight minutes or so, floodgates open. And they just, they can't remember anything. They're not trying to, they just let it happen and they start typing. And they get to typing. And the ideas start flowing. It is important that you stop after 15 minutes because then we start repeating ourselves a lot. And it's just, it's just the, you know, the return on your investment there uh, really, really goes down. So 15 minute timer. Then uh, turn your screen on, reveal your monitor, whatever you need to do, and read through what you've written. It's going to be a mess. You're not writing a paper. This is not paper writing. This is what you're doing instead of poking around on Instagram. you'll see ideas and actually you'll be thinking about the ideas because you've you've allowed yourself to just write for 15 minutes and you will have new ideas what you've written on that screen will probably be a mess that's not what this is about it's about getting past that stuck moment you can do this in the beginning oh by the way for those of you who try to start the process of writing by writing an introduction, please stop that. Introductions have a lot to do. And if you're trying to write that at the beginning, again, you're putting yourself in this position where you're trying to write an outline at the beginning. It's, it's too hard. Just let it go. Okay. But at the beginning of your process of the experience, maybe you want to try this. Or maybe you get stuck somewhere in the middle. Well, turn your monitor off. Just have at it for 15 minutes. What have you got to lose? 15 minutes that you would have been staring at the screen anyway? Give it a shot. 15 minutes. Blank monitor. Now, nobody says you have to keep writing to work on your topics and your questions. Maybe you can use the talking cure. Record yourself talking about a topic doesn't matter where you go, doesn't matter what you say, three, four, five minutes. And then do that again at another point in the day. And then, not at the same time as you're recording, later, give it at least an hour after recording, listen to what you've recorded for that day. Maybe you've done three little recordings. Maybe you've done four two-minute recordings. I don't know. Listen to it at the end of the day and see what you can generate. Maybe there's a question in there that you can arrive at, but you don't always need to be writing. You want to talk into and record some messages? Great idea. Okay. The idea with these writing hacks, I'll just call them getting started hacks, these, these tips for getting past writer's block, is that we're using them to start thinking about a subject or a problem. We're using writing or recording to figure out what you want to write about, to get to a question. Not necessarily to get to the answer, but to get to the question, to get to the topic and the question. So, 
you don't want to start with the process with thesis development or outlining or the introduction and you don't want to try to write a paper all at once whatever that means instead see if doing a real summary can help you understand much more clearly your subject and then try these hacks like 20 questions with a free write notice focus and ranking with priority three maybe you're going to try the blank monitor maybe you're going to try the talking cure these are not all going to work for you but what if one or two or three does in fact work for you how exciting is that and then you've pushed through you have found a way to get past the block or put yourself in a situation where you're never blocked to begin with okay that'll conclude our writing lounge on getting started on conquering writer's block but I also want you to note that we have three more coming up that will take us to uh, through the end of May we've got crafting quote burgers which is actually how to use sources in a way that um, I don't know is my little way of of helping us really uh, demonstrate understanding of someone else's idea and finding a way to explain how it's useful in our own investigations so uh, it's a little lighthearted way of doing that I hope you'll drop by we're going to do presentations that deliver on April 20th and on May 11th it's grammar time so we'll tackle all those all those grammar questions that uh, drive us uh, to to frustrated spaces okay uh, lighthearted attempt at grammar as well thanks for coming by the writing lounge and as always if you want these slides just go ahead and email me and uh, visit the writing lounge for uh, previous webinars and uh, you can also visit my YouTube channel for a lot more writing videos. Thanks so much.